This episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Now, you know Squarespace, the lovely company that makes it so easy for you to create your own website. So easy. Now, get started with a free trial at squarespace.com with no credit card required. And when you're ready to purchase a plan, get 10% off with the offer code RU. That's squarespace.com offer code RU. Are you? It's RuPaul, what's the tea with Michelle Visage? Hey girl. What's the tea? Hey kitty girl. Hey kitty girl. You know, that's my new thing is hey kitty girl. I know, it's been your thing for a couple months now. It's been a couple of months. And yeah. you know, I've heard it for many, many years. I I got it from Aretha Franklin. She What? Well, on her records. Oh. She I, I think the Luther Vandross record. She did two Luther Vandross records. Um uh, uh, I love that you're calling them records. Yeah. Um, the Jump To It record and the Jump... What was the other one? Get It Right? Get you're It Right. You're asking me? Yeah. Well, she, in the midst of these songs... I can tell you the Go-Go's records. Yes, I know. <laughs> she. Meanwhile, uh, uh, this is unrelated. Um, you see, we do okay, these... Okay, wait, wait. Yo. Finish your read <laughs> okay. and then tell me what you're going to say. Michelle and I do these non sequiturs. Yeah. And that's just how we speak. Some people can follow it. Most cannot. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> So let's keep it on the straight and narrow. Let's keep it on the straight and narrow. Okay. Uh, she in the midst in in the context of these songs, she takes phone calls from her friend who, and she goes, and she'll pick up the girl. Hey, kitty girl, what's up? Uh uh-uh. uh <laughs> Yes. Is yes. the girlfriend's name Kitty? No, I don't know. I think it's I just think an the girlfriend's- old. No, it's just an old term for um, like girlfriend, hey girlfriend, or hey girlfriend. It's like that, and that's where the hey kitty girl. And did you listen to it where it became? Like, oh my God, this is it? Uh, these records are 30 years old. Yeah, but you have them. Yeah. and I've You have listened, the Hall of Fame in your house. Yeah, and I've listened to this forever. So I've decided, well, because I in the car, the, the iPod is on shuffle. Right. So I hear these songs. And when I was driving and I thought, oh, you know what? I need to make Hey Kitty Girl a thing. Uh-huh. I mean, Fetch didn't work. Right. So. <laughs> no, it didn't. It didn't. Uh-uh. <laughs> so I'm going to make Hey Kitty Girl I love it. my thing. So you, you've heard me say this a lot. Many recently. times, and I love it. I think it's yeah. really cute and catchy. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. it works. Yeah, and you can say it to one person or several people. It's yeah. just, it works for everybody. Several minis. Several minis. Tell people. me what the Go Go's non sequitur was. Um, in the car this morning, I have a freestyle version of not a go go song, but this is this is how my brain yeah. works of Manic Monday by the Bengals. I have a freestyle. Who did it? I don't know who did it. You know, I get all. Does this it sound stuff. like just another Manic Monday? <laughs> no, no, it's more like um, you remember that song by uh, uh, No Fairy or whatever? No Sarah? No, not No Sarah. Uh, it's you know that it's called. It's time. Oh, yeah. Dun, yeah. Dun. Who sing? Who does that? Um, can't remember. Yeah. It starts with an N, whatever. Um, uh, it's time. That was like dun, a, dun, dun. a break dance It's jam. a break yeah. dance classic New York. It's called It's thing. Time. It's called It's yeah. Time, exactly. Um, uh, uh, anyway, it's that beat, but it's done to Manic Monday. You know who wrote Manic Monday? Susanna Hoffs didn't write it? No, that is a Prince song. Of course it is. Yeah, it's a Prince But it song. doesn't sound like a Prince song, but Prince wrote everything in that era. Well, it's, it's like, you know what a Pharrell song sounds like now. Yes, but it sounds like a Prince song because of the lyrics, because he goes, um... Uh, uh, and the melody does too now that I think about Justin, it. We can't, do we... Six uh, we'll, o'clock on one, and just, do, do, we, do we get suits for, for, for um, melodies and no, licensing? No, I am singing the song. Right. We're so not we playing it. We're not playing it. No. Right. Um, see, he goes... He rhymes Sunday with fun day. Right. Which That's is a Prince very giveaway. Prince. Yeah. Yes. So anyway, you know, this show. Um, <laughs> it's not about the Go-Go's or the Bangles. Or Hey Kitty Girl. No. <laughs> this show. <laughs> we want to talk about personal breakthroughs in every sense of it, of, of the term. You know, um, good ones. Yes. And, and well, I guess they would only be good. A breakthrough is only good. Well, well, here's the thing. It could be considered bad. In your mind when you're going through it, but when you yeah. go through the bad breakthrough, it's always to get to good. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. 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 It, it always is. It's um always darkest before the... Before the calm before the, the storm. The calm before the storm. And I got to tell you, some of the worst things that have ever happened to me in my life turned out in the long run to be the best things that ever happened to me in my life. Really? Like, let's give a one example. Well, you know, um, you know, uh, you know, one of, I, I talk about in years and years of therapy. One of the things that 
always has come up for years and years is uh, my relationship with my father. Right. He's passed away. He's moved to Paris, you know. Um, uh, Texas. Paris, Texas, exactly. (laughs) (laughs) You know, know, a psychic told me years ago, 20 years ago, that he and I shared past lives together. So Was it Walter Mercado? (laughs) Because if it wasn't, then it doesn't matter. Then it's not. Then then we were a fake. Hello. Exactly. Hey, Lear. Because if it wasn't, there's no point. There's no point. No. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so the psychic said he went out to Paris, Texas. He went out to Paris, Texas. But um, that my father and I had shared past lives together. And that when. Really? I, yes. And that when I saw him in this life, I'm like, hey, buddy, here we are together again. This year, we're going to rule the school. Mm-hmm. Right. And but he could not see me. He could not. He could not see you, Helen Keller. He could not see me, Helen Keller. But he is it not... because? And I'm not going to interrupt you, mm-hmm. but I want to no, know sorry. if it's your issues with the relationship with your dad because he's old school. Is he Louisiana? Was he was Louisiana, right? Is it was it because you were gay? No, 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 no. It had everything to do with his own uh, hiding out, his own. Um, Inability to touch his own feelings, his own emotions. So his lack of intimacy was really where it, what it was. It's beyond that. Yeah, there was that too, but it was beyond that. It, this was someone who couldn't be present in their life because they would have to deal with their life. This, uh, so was this, it substance? Was it substance? Oh, sure. There was everything. There was substance. Yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, he was he uh, had an addiction to gambling and ah, yes. booze and cigars. I, every time I smell a cigar today, I think of him. You so know? it kept all, all that he did. Kept his distance from being. Yes, got he it. He was. He was talked, and that was that's in a nutshell. Kept his distance, not just with me, but with life. But yeah. I represented the him he was ignoring, so he had to. He Makes couldn't. Sense. Yeah. He couldn't go near that, you know, because um, you know, I I've always been super emotional, super there. I could. I, I'm psychic. I could sense. My sensory, you know, so that's that he was afraid of that. Um, I will say that, and if anybody listening understands, I go through this daily with my husband and his father. Mm -hmm. It's not substance, but he is checked out mentally. Yes, my husband has never heard an I love you from his father, and Mm -hmm. all he he has when I say that, I mean he'll say it every time he gets off the phone with him. He wants nothing more Mm -hmm. than a relationship with his father, and I keep telling him. Baby, you're not going to get it. Right. He's just that guy. Yeah. And you have to accept whatever you have while you've got it. Yeah. Because what he's dreaming of in his head is not going to be there. Right. Right. You know, you don't go... Is that kind of the same thing? Oh, you, it yeah. absolutely is. You don't go to a Chinese restaurant and order lasagna. Correct. They have a gorgeous lasagna over the Trattoria <laughs> down the street. Down to that trattoria. Go to the trattoria. <laughs> Get you some lasagna. Get some lasagna. They serve it there, but they don't serve it at a Chinese. Did Chinese you crave restaurant. that relationship with your I dad? I did. I did. Because you, at the at the fundamental basic of it, you're a little boy who wants his daddy. Sure, yeah. absolutely. And on top of that, this is my buddy. This is someone who looks exactly like me. Yeah, I look exactly like him. And it was like, why? Yeah, it's so obvious. But, you know, years and years. So long story long is that I um, spent a lifetime re, um, reproducing that, that relationship with other people. Sure. Trying to play it through so that I can get what I want. That's all you know. That's all I know. Yeah. So um, ultimately, uh, you know, I, I came to a, a understanding that that's, uh, that I'm not going to get it there. But you came to the understanding before he died. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Which was great. Now, how... How did you know that you were finally at that place of this is what it is and I have to accept it? How did you get that breakthrough? Well, you know, several relationships, uh, there was a pattern that kept growing. And it, I'd have to need a brick to fall on my head to not realize, uh, you know, I am looking for the exact same person and the exact same scenario happens over again, like Groundhog's Day, the exact same thing. And I'm like, what is it? I would always be attracted to men who are super charming, super good looking, uh, laugh, funny, funny, but present, but emotionally not there. Right. Just not there. And I would say, well, I, and I, I, I really, with my father, I would be like, listen, you want sadness? I'll give you some of my sadness. Yes. You want joy? I can make you laugh. Sing, dance, what do you need? <laughs> Cherry pie? <Yeah>. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> give, me, give me 20 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Won't be a homemade cross, but give me 20 minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, and I would find myself in these situations. And then when I met George, he, George was someone who pursued me. 
I didn't necessarily... Although I saw George in the disco and I said... Who the hell is that? Well, he's 6'5 or 6'6 six, six, he's he's, and he's gorgeous. Seven. He's 6'7. And gorgeous yes. and those eyebrows and he's Australian yes. and everything that and you I, love. I, I thought, I went over and said, oh, hi, what's up? Let's go get something to eat, you know. Uh, but it wasn't, it wasn't like the others. The other people, I pursued them and they were pursuing someone else. This time with George, here's someone who... I pursued, and he pursued me. But that could backfire. How? Okay, meaning, uh-huh. and it didn't in your case. For me, I was the same person you are. I was, but in, in my Virgo ways, I was the one who would take the people who had, they needed fixing. Mm-hmm. And I was going to be the one who could fix them. I'm a rescuer by nature. So the person who may be emotionally more available than the person you're pursuing, only this person had no goal, no want. Just let me take care of you. No teeth? No, well, that could come in handy for your side. <laughs> for my genitalia, <laughs> I like some chompers. <laughs> Just a little tease. Right, there. and we're not talking uh, vagina dentata. No, I don't have teeth in my no. vagina. <laughs> talking about just men with teeth that are not yeah. removable yeah okay um, with is that, that asking said, too much men with teeth is that, that are not removable yeah no no and even removable could be okay as long as they present themselves with a fine <laughs> pair of poly grip and some dentures um so for me i always wanted to change them and what i was saying it could backfire is because when somebody pursued me I like to be the pursuer. So mm-hmm. when they pursued me, I never went for it. And it mm-hmm. was always like, this is not going to work because you're being way too aggressive. Mm-hmm. I need to be the aggressive one. Right. But in your case, it worked and you liked that. Well, in, you know what? But it took a while, didn't it? This is the thing. With George, I, when, the night I met George, I, was, I went out with my friend because I had just broken up with someone else who was the same as my father. It was the same storyline. We'd broken up, and I was, I was heartbroken, but I understood what was going on more than ever before. I understood this pattern that was happening. So you finally had some clarity on the situation. I had, finally had some clarity. Without and, therapy? Uh, just pot. At this point, just... <laughs> just marijuana. Well, that could be therapy, you know. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah. You know, but... Uh, it had happened so many times I understood finally what was happening. I was like, you know what? I got it. Okay. Don't need that anymore. All right. And I went out with my friend just to clear my head, and that's the night I so met So it's the George. same night. Yep. Same night. It was the same week. Uh, you know, I was still going through it, you know. but um, So did part of you think, I don't want this to be a rebound? Because that's what happened with my husband and I, if you remember. Yep. yep. I know you remember because you lived it with me. Yes. And you were concerned that it was. Right. Because it was three, three weeks after I met him, we got engaged. <laughs> And I told Rue, and Rue goes, oh no, girl, kitty girl, slow it down. You just got out of a five-year relationship. Yeah. He broke your heart. So did you think that at all, that you I don't want what? this to be rebound? This is the thing is, I met, I met George on his birthday, which is January 24th. It was 1994. And uh, uh, I, um, it wasn't until March that we that I said okay you know so you were friends first you hung out as friends friends. yes I see we were friends first and and he he kept pursuing and I you know pushed him away because I didn't want it to be rebound I didn't want it to be anything like that you know smart yeah I just jumped into bed with my husband well there you have it I have to test drive the vehicle before I buy a dog you didn't charge him did you no no (laughs) just some Ben and Jerry's toffee crunch Heath bar crunch whatever that is oh I'll do it exactly Bar crunch. But you learned, and uh, you actually did the smart thing. I did the wrong thing, but it just we just lucked out. Yeah, it worked out. Yeah, it worked out. But you know the thing with with my father um, is that uh, even since I realized what was happening in, in past ther- therapy, I found myself still trying to recreate that that storyline, the identity I created as the little boy left behind. That is the ongoing story in my life that I have to continue to overcome and be on the lookout for. Just because just like um it's like growing a tail that keeps growing back that you know it just keeps growing back and I have to be on the lookout for it. And, so you know, to this day it's still present. It's still there. It's always in my peripheral Perif- good vision. Boy. It's always that that danger. And I we want to talk about this a little later too about, you know, depression and and finding a way to overcome certain proclivities that my emotional 
my my ego brain just uh, gravitates. So toward. is it a place of what I'm hearing is it's a place of victim maybe? It like, is. Like what was me that my daddy didn't love me? It is. Uh. It, it is that. It is a lot so of that. So how do you stop yourself where there's kids out there and going, "Oh my god, I have that too." Like it's easy for me to be a victim. I'll right. go right there too. Yeah. Um I just don't let it happen. I blocked it out from my years of being a stoic tough ass, which mm-hmm. is not good either. Mm-hmm. But that's how I've protected myself. You can go there. How do you consciously stop yourself? Well, you just said it, consciousness. Consciousness is the key. <clears throat> it's once you sh- darkness cannot survive in the presence of light. Correct. So once you Thank shed, you Martin Luther King. Uh-huh. Once you shed the light on it, that is the antidote, right? How does one shed the light? Well, it's, it's, you know what? And this is why meditation is so important. You shed the light by becoming the observer of your mind. Because those mechanisms of me uh, recreating the little boy sitting on the porch, waiting for my father to come pick me up, oh, never so showing sad, up. Right? It is sad. Right. And, it's, it, and that's why my, my ego mind has, justifies that behavior. Because it, it really did happen. It was really awful. Correct. But I, my part in it is that I keep recreating it and reliving it. It happened way back then. It is not happening now. I am a very successful. I have love in my life. Yes, but, I have, but uh, even with success and love sometimes... It'll creep in. So how, it sure does. So how do we tell the people out there who are successful yes. and have love in their life, but they still can't help, like my husband, who has great love, great family, who can't help but to want and right. yearn just for his daddy to be like, come on, buddy, let's go, right. whatever they do. Well, listen, listen, uh, history has taught us that if your happiness is dependent on an outside source or somebody else or something out there, Correct. you are destined for heartache and misery. Happiness, joy emanates from within. You are responsible for your own happiness. So when you when you become conscious of these patterns, this, pa- this pattern that keeps popping up in my own life with my father, uh, then I get to catch myself and go, um, Rue, um, wait, uh, excuse me, wait, um, pause for a minute. Um, you're doing the thing. So you catch yourself and you call yourself to, on I it. I have to call myself on it and go, what, why are you doing the thing? What why are you hungry for the thing? You know, the Eckhart Tolle talks about the pain body. The pain body is this sort of entity that craves misery and pain. Which and is the ego, really. They're it's all connected. The, it's, yeah. all, it's all connected. So when I can catch myself from cra- from the hunger of wanting that misery, I can go, Rue, you're doing the thing. Do you try to find out what the source that's causing that thing? You know, the Because that's what I try to do. The source is the pain body. It's hungry. It's always looking for an opportunity to do it, whether it's in traffic. You know, I drove to uh, Cabazon this, this weekend. The outlets? Yes. Go- I Kitty girl! The, yes. And I always leave early, early in the morning so I don't have to deal with traffic because that thing comes out in traffic. And I don't like myself when I'm when I'm. Even if you have music on, <clears throat> you can't stop your brain? No. You know what's happening is, this is the thing. You know, uh, (laughs) break it down. (laughs) Let me break it down for you. People, lazy people, use the fast lane so they could just sit there and not have to deal with the the traffic that's coming onto the freeway and leaving. In their minds, I could stay in the fast lane and not do anything. I talk on the phone, I can do it, and I could just stay here. Meanwhile, the way the freeway and the fast lane works is that if you're going faster, use the fast lane to pass. So, but if that pa- fast lane is blocked, the whole system doesn't work because there are people coming in onto the freeway in the slow lane. You Correct. come on there and then you get to pass in the fast lane, which is the far left lane. Right. So I get angry because people are not following the rules. I know it sounds weird. No, me. it doesn't sound weird, but it happens all the time. So you have to That's throw all that there out is the to window. It. Yeah. So what I, the way around it is I use the slow lane as the fast lane. I always pass on the right, girl. You pass on the right. Always. And it what 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 gets me about it is illegal, it, by the way. No, it's probably illegal. No. This pro, but the thing is, it rubs up against that part of my my emotional thing that says this is not the way it's done, and because this it's, is not yeah. fair. I'm following the rules. You're not following the rules, and it's screwing up everybody. It's slowing up traffic, and it's blocked. And I get really frustrated. So I have to let people be. You you want to be in the fast lane, slow, fine. That's so. Hard. It is hard, but that is where do I do want do I want to be right or do I want to be happy? Correct. I want to be happy. Correct. And I have to fight 
the inclination to want to be right. Mm -hmm. And the same thing with, um, you know, uh, I call it the saboteur, with overriding my saboteur, is that I have to... um, I have to make the decision to consciously look at what's happening and go, oh, I'm going, I'm doing the bit. So a tip for our kids mm-hmm. and, and for me, because I'm still learning to deal with my inner saboteur and I've got loads of it. And, and look, Rue has to do with Rue's father. Mine has to do, I think, with being an adopted kid and feeling unwanted from the beginning of life unconsciously. Mm-hmm. That stuff gets into our ego yeah. in the womb. Yeah. My mother knew she was giving me up. Mm-hmm. And that traveled to me. I firmly believe that. Um, So what I do sounds a lot like what you're doing is you verbally, I verbally have to do it. Call yourself out, yes. I can't just do it in my head, Mm -hmm. although I can, but I'd rather prefer looking like a crazy person talking to myself and going, okay, 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 okay. what are you doing? What are you doing? Mm -hmm. And I do it Mm -hmm. and it snaps me out of it. Right. Some books that I've read and I forgot who it was and forgive me, whatever author it was they literally say to go stop stop Mm -hmm. they say to say stop out loud Mm -hmm. so you hear yourself and you know what you're doing right and i hear your voice a lot rue in my head when i'm trying to deal with it going okay i see you Mm -hmm. i see you but i'm choosing to now let you go i acknowledge you it's time to go oh bye bye yeah bye bye i think that that's it that is it and then you know once you recognize what you're doing that the shedding the light on the darkness that is the key and I, i'll sometimes this <laughs> i do this thing where i go oh, if i'm especially if i'm procrastinating i'll go rue one two three rue one two three rue 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 wake up wake up and i go huh oh oh right right yes okay stay on stay the course stay but the it's course. the ability i think that most people can have the problem with because i still do and have for years it's the ability to then stay on course even though we're saying all these things and we're mm-hmm. really giving it our all and we're trying it's to actually make it work yeah and not let it creep right back in yeah because you know it can you know it reminds me she of got that, tentacles it reminds me of that scene in the exorcist where father Marin and the young priest are going into the room to see you know reagan, reagan the, right yeah and he says um he says um you know she's going to tell you everything to just to get you and she she knows you and then he at one point the uh and young she priest, did and she did and the young priest at one point says how many demons are in there and the uh older priest says oh there's just the one <laughs> and that is the scariest point in that movie because it means that <clears throat> there's just one evil there's just one evil and that evil metaphorically speaking is with, outside it's within you it is within you yeah it is your and you you but you can control and moderate yourself i know this is this is where language fails us because this is where you know language doesn't talk about this stuff in terms of being a human being right. so it gets a little confusing i understand we didn't it. learn this in high school you didn't learn this in high school and listen i didn't come up with this stuff there are all the spiritual leaders all of the ascended masters all the books out there they all say the same thing and rue is a big big supporter of eckhart tolle uh put it on my ipod i listen to it when i hike and uh either or the power of now and uh, all of those books, planet Earth. What was it? It was a new Earth. A new Earth. And listen, all of those books I've gotten from Audible, which is you know a sponsor for oh, our show. Oh, they're the best on Audible. So when you have those moments when you're driving, when you have those moments when you're working out or hiking, or you're having a specific tough day, pop it on. You've got it right there on your iPod. Well, and and it's just it's so interesting to hear. And I listen to them over and over. I, you know, I go to bed to my Audible audio books all the time, and I listen to them. Uh, <laughs> You know, I, I fall asleep, but it enters into my Correct. subconscious. Correct. I've doing, been doing this for years. Yeah, it's like when you learn another language and they tell you to sleep. Yes, but yes it's exactly yes. what it is. So, you know, I'm saying all this stuff. If you you can, can you can catch yourself, and it takes practice, just like a muscle. You you have to practice this thing because. The bad news is that this voice, this other voice in you that sort of tries to sabotage you, it does not go away. It'll always be there. It'll always be there. So, but you, you have to counterbalance it with the, uh, the, uh, the good thoughts, the thoughts that say, you know, I am not my thoughts. I'm not my feelings. I'm not my perception. My perception can be off. My prayer every morning is this. This is my prayer every morning. I okay. say, dear God, thank you. I'm not religious, by the way, uh, but I do pray. I say, dear God, thank you. Thank you. I ask that you guide my thoughts, my feelings, and my perceptions. And my new part to this prayer is, 
I release all identity to you. So that I'm at that moment, and then I say amen. And at that moment, I am clear. I'm clear of all of the attachments to dad, to, uh, you know, what the old relationships, uh, anything. I'm a clear vessel at that point. Are you the person who ever looked for closure? Because my issue would be, okay, I can get rid of those thoughts. I can replace it with the good thoughts, but I didn't get closure on that thought that just went away. Mm. See that thought over there? But I didn't get closure on why that was bothering me. So I sometimes will go through my brain and go, why was that bothering me? And I try to look into, what, what was it that just triggered that, whether it was something I saw online, on TV, heard on the radio, read in the paper, what was it that's sitting in me that's but obsessed? But does it matter? It's does hurting that me. matter to know the source? It doesn't matter. No, of course mm. not. It doesn't matter. But I think that's a... It's also a control issue of having I think it's put, an OCD Yeah, issue. it is. <laughs> so put closure on that bitch and put a cap on it. Yeah. But it really doesn't matter because no. I can't fix it anyway. If I could, it wouldn't bother me, right? No, you know, yeah, but it wouldn't bother you. But you know what? And this is, I found that even with everything we've said here, that me and the little boy he left on the porch waiting for my father, there is an attraction to that identity. And I, we talked about it with you earlier, but the payoff there. Humans don't do anything unless there's a payoff. Right. And, you know, like Judge Judy says, follow the money and then you'll get the answer. In this case, the payoff is the money. And I've realized that I'm, I looked for those relationships like my father and I, because I, I knew how they would end. I know the story. I know how it goes. I use those situations as justification to shut the world out once it did go wrong shut the world out to talk shit about the world and say that um those shoes with that belt right you know um don't i do that for a living right (laughs) because this is the thing if i am a victim enough i feel like the world has treated me so bad and that my family everything i got a, a bum deal then it affords it gives me the opportunity to then talk shit about everything else. This sucks. I hate this. You know what? I'm I'm not doing anything. Right. You know, it it allows me. Uh, it, it, it covers a multitude of sins. It allows me to um to not participate. No, and like attracts like. So what you're going to do is start bringing all that nasty energy over to you. Yeah. Which there's enough out there on your own without even attracting it to you. That's going to be when you're in the public eye, it gets thrown at you anyway. Mm-hmm. So it's our job to be able to shut that down and, you know, excommunicate. Yeah, you, you are responsible for your own happiness. And there's no two ways about it. And we like to make everybody else responsible for my happiness. But it doesn't work that way, you yeah. know. I, uh, you, uh, you know, I watched that. Uh, you saw in my dressing room. Um, I was watching uh, Planet Earth. Yes, and it shows all of the. Um, it shows all of the the nature programs and how in nature, you know, the big fish eat the little fish. Why did and I have to walk in on the spider part? Though? I know, I know. That whole series is yeah. that the BBC series? Yeah. Uh huh. I have it all on DVD. It's amazing. It is amazing. It really is a DVD collection everybody should own. Yeah, you know, my camera guy, uh, Jake, gave that to me. It, isn't it great? It's, it's Do you know, Lily used to, my daughter used to go to sleep to it every night for like two years. Really? She'd put that DVD on every even night. When the, um, even when the polar bear is trying to eat the walrus? All of it, the under the sea one, uh-huh. all of it. She loved it. There was something about the grounding of the planet Earth and what happens everywhere. That comforted her. But you know, but um, and I know you're an animal rights activist, and you're you know you're a very emotional person. The 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 the, the, the bottom line is that nature is seemingly cruel through human eyes. Absolutely, it's very cruel. So we try to right the wrongs, our perceived wrongs of nature by saying um you know no we're going to wipe out all the wolves out of um wyoming so that the other animals can have a chance not knowing that it's it's a food chain and (laughs) and they're there for a reason i don't want to hear like when my my father-in-law my in-laws uh father-in-law big hunter Mm -hmm. david doesn't hunt with all the brothers Mm -hmm. because he doesn't like hunting and my father-in-law will tell me well we eat the meat and we're helping with the overpopulation of deer and it's like hmm you just want to kill. <laughs> and you want, you want to eat the meat. That's fine. And I'm not judging. Right, you do whatever right, you right, want. Yeah. But people make excuses why right. they do what they do to justify the means. Right, right. And I understand that. And everybody, again, everybody has their own thing and they do what they do. I don't believe in hunting because I believe that every animal should be able to live out its life the way it's going to live it out. If they get killed by a gazelle or, or a lion, then that's, 
that's how it was written. Right, right. Well, that's I only bring that up because there is a, there is a system here, and the truth is, and I bring it up because you are responsible for your own happiness, and no one else is, and no one other person can do that. And that's why I said, you know, if you want lasagna, go down to the... the, the Trattoria. Exactly, because they don't serve it at a Chinese... And this is the thing, with my father, I, you know, I wanted to get... Uh, lasagna out of him, right? You know, I said, "Look, look, you have a kitchen, don't you?" If he was the Chinese restaurant, I would go in there because I'd go in there and say, "Listen, there's the kitchen. I know uh, you got noodles. I know you got noodles. Yeah. We could we could make some uh, lasagna up we in here. We can make this happen. See, this is the thing. I could do that. He could not do that. Right? I I'm a creative mf. I can do. I could make lasagna in a Chinese restaurant. He could not. He do only that. saw what was he in front of him. He only saw what was yeah. in front. So I have to accept that. I had to accept that. And that is part of my healing, that relationship. It's right. like saying, you know, and I got to tell you, um, uh, years of therapy, I deconstructed who he was, who he was. Was that a bad thing for you? No, it was a great thing. Because you saw who he really was. I got to take the, I got to op- put the car up on blocks, yeah. open the hood, take that engine apart and go, what is going on here? Why was I so compelled to change my life so much because of this person? And I realized um, it was all my imagination. Yes, all those things happened. But because of my creative force, I was able to imagine that he did this stuff as a malicious assault no, yeah. on me that yeah. was this and that and this. It wasn't that at all. Yeah. He was not even conscious. He was like a ghost. Yeah. In fact, when I deconstructed him, he was just this little old man. Country. Country. <laughs> from Louisiana. Uh-huh. Not a lot of... Not a lot else. That's uh-huh, it. Uh-huh. But because my creative mind. So I, you I saw him for what he really was. I saw him for what he really was, yeah. and that's that's not a bad thing. It's just that I had to adjust and recalibrate my emotional uh, identity. But then after that point, you were able to have somewhat of a relationship with him. You were able to see him. It wasn't the relationship that you dreamed of as little no, Rue. No, no. But you were able to. Be present with him and have moments with sure, him. Sure, I can have Chinese food every once in right, a while. Right, right. But it worked, I think, to your benefit, having gone through that process. Yeah, I yeah. think. Because you were able to see him and see him on to another life. Absolutely. You know absolutely. what I mean? But that's what this is all about. That's, you know, that's, you know, you can't make one person uh, your, your grocery store. You know, in New York, you go to the butcher for your meat. You go to the hardware store. For, out here in California, you go to you go to Vons. They have everything. It's a one-stop shop. One and we try to make our partners one-stop shopping, but they really can't be. And who would want to be? No, and, and the truth is, no, and that's very true. Um, but let me go back to my other thought. In my head, I'm compartmentalizing it. Are you talking in me head? I'm talking in me head. I hear uh-huh. voices in me head. Um, <laughs> One stop shop is a fallacy because, you know, I go grocery shopping at four different places for a reason. I like certain things from here, certain things from there, certain, and I like, that's how I like my friends. Certain friends are, fill, f- you know, fulfill one need, certain friends fulfill another, and some of them have all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. The, the, the thing that's wrong is if you try to force somebody mm-hmm. to be that one stop shop when they're never going to be mm-hmm. that one stop shop. And then you realize, oh, she don't carry no hardware. Uh uh-uh. uh. Then I'm going to have to go somewhere else. Uh, I'm going to get my cheese somewhere uh-huh. else. I'm going to have to go find my string cheese somewhere <laughs> else because I like mine organic. <laughs> so once you realize that and accept it, that's okay. Your husband, your wife, your best friend could give you almost everything you need and one thing is missing. It's okay to yeah. move, you know, to have somebody else that gives you that something extra. Yeah. As long as, you know, it's okay with everybody else involved. <laughs> Y'all know what I'm saying. Yes, you down with OPP. You, you know me. <laughs> All right, so let's take a break. I want to actually talk about uh, depression. I want to, you know, the, you know, it's a big one with everybody. I want to talk about that and um, uh, and personal breakthroughs. That that's the theme of this show. Right. Personal break. You know, I talked about my father, and that was huge. that was your big breakthrough. That was huge. But when we come back, we're going to talk about depression. Okay, and personal breakthroughs. Yes, great. Now, before we talk about personal breakthroughs, now, we have received some great emails at rupaulpodcast at gmail.com about your Squarespace websites. I love looking at these things. There's so many creative people who listen to this podcast. There's an email here from Mask Windy. 
I don't know what Mask Wendy is. Uh, that's a name, Mask Wendy. I love it. Um, I'll go with it. It says, Dearest Hunties, Rue and Michelle, fell in love with your podcast and listened to all of them in one week. I'm living for it. You inspired me to make a Squarespace site because I'm a writer and I need to express myself. It's already up and running and about 30 people a day are visiting. I am so stoked. Thanks so much for the inspiration. You don't have to mention my site or anything. I don't expect it at all. But if you want to check it out, I'd be so honored. She's got that in capital letters. I'm saying she because I don't know what Mask Wendy is. The uh, email, the, um, the website is throwingqueers.com. And it still doesn't tell me if she's a man or a woman. I'm going to think of her as a, a man. Oh, no, as a woman. Uh, something. I don't, it doesn't matter. It says here, you both help me to remember there's a life worth living in this world, even when it feels like it's pointless. That's the greatest thing people like yourselves can give the rest of us mere mortals. It says, peace and love from down under. Uh, Mask Wendy. I love that. I love that, she, that he, she uh, <laughs> feels that way about us. Now, uh, Mask Wendy's website is throwingqueers.com. You guys should check it out. Uh, you know, uh, making a website with Squarespace is so easy. And listen, if you guys want to do this thing, if you want to make a, a website, get a free trial with no credit card required just by going to squarespace.com. And if you're blown away and ready to confirm a plan, use the offer code RUE to get 10% off. It's that easy. You'll be getting a great deal and helping keep what's the T for reach out. Mm -hmm. Hey, and thanks again to Squarespace and keep sending your websites to RuPaulPodcast at gmail.com. And if you want that gorgeous offer, go to squarespace.com, offer code RU, R-U. Okay, we are back, RuPaul. What's the tea with Michelle Visage? We want to talk about depression. I know it, you just, it's, it, that is a dirty, that is a dirty topic. Well, I no, think a but lot it's, of people, there's so much taboo around, exactly. and there's so much shame around depression. But so many people deal with it. It's also over abused. That term. Mean? A lot of people go, oh, I'm depressed. Mm -hmm. it, depression really is a clinical thing sure. that is really debilitating if you want to get down to the real T. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um, but people use the word depressed all the time when really what they're feeling is just some angst or they're sad. Yeah, yeah. That word, that big D, is is a very big difficult word it is and you know i've found i've always run with the super emotional people artists people who who hear sounds that other people cannot Scorpio. hear Scorpio. yes and so um the people that and, and and i'm always interested in complex people and usually people who are emotional people complex people the other side of the dark side of the moon is always depression yeah. you know yeah I, and i i find that um if you are emotional, if you're sensitive... Or creative. Or in creative. Creative types always. Absolutely. Then you can see through the the facade of this world. You can see through the matrix. And it can be very, very ugly. Yes. Be very ugly. I think I told you earlier that uh, the darkness, I like to call it, the, the dark passenger or the, the dark night of the soul is always in my peripheral vision. Right. It's right over there. I can always see it. So how do you keep Darth Vader at bay? Well, I have to be active. It, it, uh, it's an ongoing job. Otherwise, I'll succumb to it. Just like I talked about earlier about my tail growing back. But I have witnessed you when you sunk into these holes. Mm -hmm. And it, it's not... It's not uh, it's it's soul destroying. Yeah, because you go away. I do. You hibernate. Yeah, and you don't want to be bothered by anything, anybody, mm -hmm. which is a very big Scorpio thing, actually. Yeah. Yeah. When when the weather gets cold, Scorpios like to hibernate and they go into this dark place. Yeah. But I'm talking. The last time I see that happen, saw that happen with you was years. Yeah, it's it's taken me years to be able to deal with it and to not justify it uh, as a, a way to um, renew my battery. Right. I, I, I've always thought, you know, this is a way for me to sort of reclaim my creativity, to sort of have time to, you know, grow it back. But that, that doesn't have to be, you Do know. Do you fear that time? Do you fear, let's say, holiday time? Because it's mm -hmm. usually in the winter. Yeah. Yeah. Do you every season go, uh-oh? I do. You know what? It uh, it always I always on the lookout for it and anticipate it. Starts Halloween night, and ironically, <laughs> see there you go. Yeah, 
Ironically, uh, Groundhog Day, which is usually February 2nd, uh-huh. is around the time when I can peep my head out. <laughs> I go, okay, is yeah. it good? Is yeah. it good? But um, it, I know that if I get a running start and I know it's coming, um, I can over overcome it. I don't have to go there. I don't want to go there. I don't like it. I know you don't. I don't like it. So what I'll do is um, if I'm exercising, if I'm eating right, if I'm sleeping, if I'm um, you know, hiking and doing all the stuff that I normally do... I don't have to. I don't have to go there, oh, honey. It's been years, yeah, years, years, years. I can't even recall, yeah, the last time. But I know that it's it was tough for you. It was, and I, you know, I'd be banging on the door, going, "Come on, let's go out and play. Yeah. Do you want to build a snowman? Yeah. Come on, you know." And it just well, that's that's the story. Of my mother too. My mother uh, after when the breakup with my father happened, I think in sixty seven is when what they started. You know, they started the breakup in like sixty five, but by sixty seven. <laughs> They were completely divorced. She stayed in her room for two years. Completely disconnected. Two years. Young children. How old were you? I in in sixty seven. I was six. And you were the baby. No, Rosie's the was baby. Was even younger. Was, yeah, even younger. Yep. So you have this. What is she? Four or five? She was only a year younger than me. So, right, so she, she was, was five. five. You have this five and six year old kids yeah. who need their mommy. Yes. And my sisters, uh, my older sisters, who are seven years older yeah. than than uh, than me. They became the They parent. raised you. Yeah. So uh, they were 12, 12, 13, somewhere around there. Can you imagine? There. My 12-year-old couldn't raise a friggin' flower from soil. Well, kids today are different. Kids are more precious today. Kids are a precious commodity. They weren't... When I was growing up, kids were not a precious commodity. Well, girl, they threw us out on the street. We're like, <laughs> see you at dinner time, and I'll call for you. Right? Right. My mother didn't know where I was. No. All day long. <laughs> She would lock the screen door and keep it open, making me think she's doing me a favor because yeah. her air conditioning was on in her bedroom only with the door shut. Uh-huh. The house AC was off. She'd lock the screen door. See ya. Uh-huh. I'll call you. And she had a mouth and a half. Surprising uh-huh. that I have one. She goes, I'll call you when it's dinner time. Did not know where I was. Yeah, yeah. Did not know what I was doing, who I was with. What were you doing? Well, <laughs> my first sexual experience was with a girl and it was my neighbor. That's what I was doing. How old were you? Eight Eight? Eight years old. Oh, you were fast. I had no choice. Yeah. This is what it was. Yeah. You'd get beat up if you didn't do what she wanted you to do. Really? Absolutely. Which probably sounds more like molestation, but I was down for it once it happened. Yeah. The point is, if kids did that today, who knows who's out there lurking? Right. I was doing anything, not just that, smoking cigarettes. You know, I was doing everything. But I, I wonder, is it more dangerous or is it the same? And it seems more dangerous because the media has used it as a tool to, to instill fear in people. I think it's more dangerous in the sense that people have things that are more readily available, like weapons, um, shackles, handcuffs, mm. and they have a more evil mind because, and I know we're going off track and we'll get back on track mm. to depression, but they have a more evil mind because we're numb to what we see on the news, on TV, on the internet, in pictures, mm-hmm. and people have gotten darker and darker and darker. That's why it's more dangerous. Mm. I, I don't, I don't coddle my children in the way that I'm not a helicopter, well, I am a bit of a helicopter mom. I want to know where my kids are all the time, right. but I let them do stuff. You know, my kids are not homeschooled. They go to public school. You know, I want them to have a somewhat upbringing that's reminiscent of what I had. Mm. But the difference is there are a lot more creepers that can find your kids a lot easier. You know how hard it was to find us when we were growing up? There was one guy called the jogger that was flashing himself to the kids if you mm-hmm. went through the woods. Mm-hmm. My mother said, you're still walking home. Don't go through the woods. <laughs> that's the answer. <laughs> the guy was like flashing himself and trying to molest children. Wow. So the point is, these days, that's that's the only difference. I don't know. I hear what you're saying. I don't know if it's more dangerous. I it, I don't know because the media they're so, they're so insidious and they and are looking. For, and yeah, they, yeah. Who knows? Who knows? You know, I do believe there's a certain. I, I bet you you're right. And if you look down to it, maybe it's one or two percent more. Right. You know, and it, we blow it up to be much more, but. The point is, we were out there doing I nothing, sure and was. your sisters were raising you. They, they were, you, although you know, they were. They got away as soon as possible. Did they cook for you? Uh, no, we were. We, uh, Did meal you eat ramen for noodles? us was was no, it was uh, frozen fish sticks mm. and mm. Uh, French fries with mayonnaise. <laughs> Miracle Whip. Miracle Whip. Yes. yes, yes, Miracle Whip. All right, but uh, you know, but my mother was that way. I I inherited that. She would tell me. She would say, Rue, you are too GD sensitive and you reminisce too much. She would tell that to me. Michelle, I was five years old at the time. 
Who were you reminiscing? I, 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 of your times in the womb? I don't know, but this was I I in hindsight I know this was her way of protecting me. She didn't want me to have the life that she had, which is I'm sure she was the exact same way. Reminiscing too much and uh was too Mama sensitive. from Louisiana too? Mom was from Louisiana. That's where they met each other. In the bayou? No, actually uh, she's from the bayou, but my they my parents met in Beaumont, Texas. In which, Texas, yeah, which is not far from from. Uh, Brought them to Texas. Uh, my father was in the service, and my mother moved there to go to school. She moved there to go to uh, secretarial school or something like that in Beaumont, Texas. So me and Miss Charles had a career. She did. She knew how to type. She, I think, she could type six seventy words a minute. Some is that sound right? I don't yeah, know. that's good. Yeah, and then um, uh, she. So they met there, and my sisters were born in Houston. Wow, yeah. I didn't know that. And then they moved Rosie out. Rosie and Renetta? Uh, Renee? Ren- Ren- Renee Ren- and Renetta. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> she had the thing for ours, girl. Yes. But anyway, uh, you know, the depression thing. Uh, so yeah. did it set in Did it set in early for you? I was. I was always an introspective kid. I always felt like I was dropped on this planet by mistake and that everybody was anesthetized. Anesthet- I can't say that Go word. Go ahead anesthetized correct um, I knew you but had it I was wide awake on the operating table in this life and I thought I'm seeing everything um, you know and wasn't until I saw Woody Allen's Annie Hall that oh, I, I experienced moment. someone doing the same thing I was thinking which he would stop the character our, our, our Albie in the movie would stop people on the street and go, Oh, yeah. are you feeling, are you feeling a little <laughs> weird about the fact that she, and they would go, well, Abby, um, what's happening? Is this is your love with Jewish people. That's where it comes from because of your early Woody Allen. Probably. But, uh, uh, you know, that's how I felt. And I couldn't find anybody who I could talk to about life. And, and I, I've said you this on the show. You were five. You were five. But you know, I, it wasn't until I was, but 10 years old, I started smoking weed and stuff, you know, 10 Years old, yeah, smoking weed. Yeah, well, this was a different time. A whole no, but by the way, time. I could have been doing the same thing. My mother wouldn't have known. So yeah, oh, I yeah, get it. Yeah, Holy but that the, the weed helped. Even though it's a depressant, it helped me deal with uh, the, the mundane um, uh, hypocrisy that I just could not stand right. in, in life, and and that I was it depressed me. Right, because you were on a different plane than the average human. Yeah, because the average human, if you think about it. You put your blinders on and we go through life. We are just trying to make the next meal. We are just trying to make the next paycheck so we can feed our feed our family, feed ourselves. Um, and that's really what it's about. And we put these blinders on so we don't feel, I think. Yeah, don't but you? you know what? I think depression over the years has become such a big thing because people are so aware of of the hoax of this life. I think that there are more people depressed now. And we talked about, are there more child predators out there? I don't know. The news, uh, you know, would have you believe that. I don't know if there right. are. Um, but there definitely seems to be more depressed people out there because more people are on the medications and all of that, the antidepressants and all that stuff. I think that we're sold this idea that life is going to be a certain way. And then once you, you really see what's happening, you see the cracks in the matrix, you get depressed because... It's never going to be what it's promised to be. It's never going to be like in the TV commercials or all the... <laughs> Where the flowers are blooming. And, right. Yeah. It's never going to so be So how that. do we turn it around when we realize that when we get to the wizard and it's just a little man right, behind the curtain, right. how do we go, uh, you know, and get what Dorothy got out of it? Yeah. Like, how do we get that feeling of, oh my God, it's been me all along, like... Well, that's that's it right there. Right, it, but it how you, do we you, feel that? Well, how you feel that, and I'll tell you how I felt it, is that um, in my career especially, I had to find what I liked about it. I love to laugh. That's my number one thing. I love colors. I love beauty. I love you to, love to dance. dance. I love music. Yeah. Start there. Start there. Start with the things. So if you don't love colors, beauty, dancing, start with the things that make you feel happy. Exactly. That's Whether it. it's drawing. For me, it tends to be... I know it sounds crazy, but I love going to Goodwills and finding bargains. Uh They make me really happy to go, oh my God, I just got this dress for $2.99. I love going to garage sales. That stuff makes me happy and it's little and it doesn't cost a lot. And you can do stuff for free. I love to cook, believe it or not. I love to bake, yeah. So, But I love to do it with my kids because I feel them come alive. And through them, I feel like I'm coming alive and I'm nurturing them with good food 
and everybody's happy. That's that's the Jew in me. That's what I grew up with. My mother who loved to cook and feed everybody, and you know, you feel so good when you do this and seeing everybody nurtured. And I love it. I love to breastfeed gay children. It makes me happy. Yes. Well, you're natural at you know being a, 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 a emotional provider, a, a nurturer. You yeah. know, that's that's who you are. You and that know? makes me feel good. So you have to do what makes you feel good. I love doing crossword puzzles i love playing games i'm a gamer like i like to turn on the xbox and you don't you can't spend all day doing it but if you do it for 20 minutes and it makes your soul feel happy for whatever you're doing do it sure yeah but it is up to you it's it's you know uh it's a personal journey it's a personal journey in it and it is your responsibility your one job in this life the only job you ever have is to make yourself and to be make yourself happy to yeah. be happy that's your job and you you know um you know i get i get uh uh you know persuaded and swayed off track from from time to time but a lot of times that could be just a sugar imbalance it could yes. be that i'm you know uh one of my some of my friends i'll say have a term called halt which is hungry angry lonely or tired oh, i love that yeah you have to check in on yourself and say, um, am I any of those things? Have I had enough water? Am I hydrated? Guys, you know, sleep. Sleep, sure. Is so, Rue and I were talking this before we were running the, the tape here. So important. Your body needs, it is not a fallacy. I know my husband has such a problem sleeping. Really? You've never been the best sleeper. You get no, up at four I'm, o'clock in no, the morning. No, I'm an insomnia. I, but you know, I, I can do five hours. I can do four hours. I don't believe it. Yes, you can do it because that's all you know. But I'm telling you, your body's going to be healthier, function better, everything, your skin, yeah. everything's going to be better if you get at least seven. Yeah. I need eight to nine, but I don't get it. I would love it. I yeah. would love it. You know, yeah. I go to bed. I, but some, you know, I'll go to bed at nine. I'll wake up at four. I'll go to bed <laughs> at 8.30. I'll wake up at three. Unbelievable. Your body just naturally is so used to not sleeping. Albert Einstein, they say, went had like three or four hours a night. Mm. And that was it ever. Um not that he lived a really long life. Did but he? I don't know. How no, he we... didn't die super young, but he didn't yeah. die super old either. Right. But sleep is such an important component that a lot of people think they're depressed. And if they just get more sleep, mm -hmm. it'll change your entire uh, chemical makeup. Right. It really right. does. Yeah. But you're right. Halt is great. So it was... Hungry, angry, lonely, tired. I love that. Yeah. And what do we do for lonely? Well, you know, listen, if you want to meet people, join a class. Amen. Go to a class. Go to, um, go, you have to get out of the house. Yeah. That's the first thing is get out of the house. A lot of times, you know, you know, I've been famous for years mm -hmm. and, but it wasn't until this TV show, RuPaul's Drag Race, that me out of drag and, and even to a whole other generation of kids who didn't know anything I did before RuPaul's Drag Race right. I go out and I'm people people see me and they're taking I saw a picture the other day of me crossing the street I didn't know the picture was being taken that's so creepy it is so weird so there's a part of me that thinks oh can I deal with that do I want to stay in the house uh, you know I think no Ru you cannot afford to stay in the house get your ass out. well now's house. the time now's yeah. the time yeah and yes not only afford for career purposes that's why we're here that's why we do what we do but more for your happiness because the thing is you do feel better when you're around people whether they're fawning sure. over you or just meeting strangers I met the most beautiful trans girl yesterday at Sharky's she was looking at me because I know she clocked me but uh -huh. I look like I do now not a drop of makeup I had my eyeglasses on my hair in a top knot I had my daughter getting her food and she goes you look familiar I go I do I had no makeup on nobody knows what I look like without makeup she goes I see you on the RuPaul show and I go oh you're right you know and she's like I'm family I'm one of the girls I just want to say how much this show means to us and and the point being this energy just gave me so much energy yeah. I left there feeling so great and alive knowing what we do brings happiness to so many people and you're right my friend's dealing with it now she wants to meet people but she doesn't like to go out i said listen take your ass to starbucks and do your work at starbucks yeah. go somewhere you join have to a fight class. It. you have to fight yes. that, that power because you i i know that of all the depressive uh isolating i've ever done in my life it has never paid off one dividend no it's never led to something better or it's never protected me 
I you go darker. To, you go darker. Yeah. You have to override it. You have to override it. And you have to force it. yourself. Yes. You have to, look, there's no easy way out. You have to force yourself to do stuff you do not want to do. All right, we're going to take some emails from our, we get a lot of emails from people. Get a lot of emails, tweets, Facebook posts. I, I take over airware, girl. I love it. Yeah. Now, if you want to email us, the email address is RuPaul Podcast at gmail.com. Yes. And it's not RuPaul's uh, podcast. No, that's too is complicated. It? No, it's RuPaul podcast <laughs> at gmail.com. We keep a gully. Uh-huh. So um, what do you got, Michelle? Well, I got a tweet, actually. She didn't email us. I think she's one of our sisters, Lucy C. Snatch. Uh-huh. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. You know, From the C. Snatch dynasty. Yes, of course. Yes, the house yeah. of C. Snatch. Yes. She says, how do you tell your friend that you hate their cologne? Ooh. Well, first of all, you tell your friend that she should be wearing Glamazon by RuPaul. Exactly. Um, but really, that's a difficult one. It is. But it depends how close you are with your girl, right? Yeah. Yeah. Don't you think? It is. You know, um, there. You know, I used to. I used to be allergic to them. I'm not I know, anymore. I know. I'm not. Anymore. Not any of them. Um, some of them, like the, like I don't want to name any names. No, you don't. But yeah. I know that because for you to go from allergic the way you were to nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I've always loved the oils, you know. In fact, I was downtown L.A. Uh, yesterday. Some I frankincense. Bought, I bought some essential oils from this company called Tanner, something Tanner. They they get essential oils from Northern California. And you just put them on? And you put them on, and they're gorgeous. But um, I got to tell you, I love that Glamazon. I, no Tino shade, I wear it all the time. And you're telling me that it's very strong. Well, what I think about Glamazon, and I love it, is, and, and this is a good point Mm -hmm. you buy it i need literally one maybe two sprays Mm because it is so strong Mm -hmm. i told you it reminds me shares on inhibited which is my all-time favorite (laughs) perfume ever of all time and the same thing with that because it's so strong and it lasts all day so that means when you spend money on the bottle that's going to last way longer every other scent i kill myself with it right and you smell it but we become numb and we become like you can't smell anymore well, okay, so now honestly, so splits, the, the, now right. with with this with the friend, it depends on how much how close of a friend they are. You know, I I you know I used to you are hate correct. to hug someone, and then I'd have their icky scent that I don't like on my shirt, and then I have to and have it happens. dry cleaned. That happens, you know, the next day because I couldn't stand it. Um, there's one scent. The okay. I don't want to name any names. Okay, I'm going to name one on the positive side when that okay. happens. When okay. I first met Leah Remini, uh-huh. she used to wear this perfume all the time. She's changed. Yeah. But it was a very Hollywood scent that I didn't know existed because when I first moved here in 2002, it's an oil. Uh-huh. So that stuff lasts forever, like you said. She would hug me and I'd always go, and she was like, I don't want to tell you what it is. I go, tell me, I want it. So uh-huh. she finally told me and she said, like, it's a, you get it at Fred Siegel, it's called Child. It's going to kill me, but uh-huh. tough shit. Uh-huh. Um, it smells so good, but I wore it so much I got sick of it. Uh-huh. Because uh-huh. it was an oil, yeah. but it used to stick with me all day. So it's a benefit when you like when what you it like smells it. Yeah. like. Yeah. But when you don't, it does. You s- close smell of it, right. and there's some that I really cannot oh, stand. I know. That are heinous, and I don't understand why you'd want to smell like that. I don't know. Well, there's one. There was that most popular. I'm not going to name names, but there was that mo- the most popular one in the ever uh, by a French designer. Um, I know what you're going to say. Uh huh. And. In the elevator of my building, I could tell there was a woman who lived there. I could tell she wasn't in the elevator, but I could know. I knew she was in the elevator earlier. Does it rhyme with skewer, or does it rhyme with plulaire? Neither one. Uh uh. Oh, uh, okay. uh, It it it's. Do you know? Um. Um. Let's see. Oh, remember the the remember the um radio host Blank and Anthony? Yes. Yes. It, I got it's it. It's like blank. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. You don't like that? I don't. I love I that because it's so spicy. It, I love the spiciness of yeah. it. I do love the cinnamony of it. Gotcha. But I, there's something else going on there. Yeah. And then there's... The, the, there's all, got a musk to it. I love all that stuff. You would think I would love Maybe it. Maybe putting it all together, it's, it's too much. It also, it seems... It's, it smells old-fashioned now. Well, because it, it so is. It was so hot. It yeah. came out in 77, yeah. 76, something like that. It would, now it's old-fashioned. And the same for me with that New York designer's colognes. Um, he... Um, this is fun. Yeah. He, 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 he doesn't... His name is, is the name of the company. Okay. But um, he doesn't design for it anymore. And um, do you want me to mouth it to yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, mouth it. Oh, yes. Yeah. No, I can't stand that. You're talking about the one with Kate uh, Moss. Yes. That one? But that, <laughs> Michelle, that everybody knows that you might as well just say. Well, what's the wrong with you? Just, I'm giving my opinion. <laughs> I don't like it. The one that rhymes with splenernity. <laughs> no, that's 
wasn't it. It was Clapleshin. <laughs> <laughs> the point is, it was everywhere. It's that everywhere. was your point. It still is. Okay, so how do you tell someone, uh, you know what, girlfriend, you stink? Well, you don't say that. Yeah. Even if I was, if it were you yeah. and you're best friends with somebody, I would say, not my favorite. Or, girl, that is so strong. Right, right. Tone it down a little. Yeah. You know? But here's the thing. You're not going to care what I like. I'm not going to care what you like. Right, right. But you can say, nicely, maybe, I, I got I to gotta wait outside because your perfume is making me choke. Mm, I don't know. Mm. Is there a nice way to say that? Is there a nice way to say that? Um, I, I guess you could preface, preface it by saying, look... I, I'm gonna I listen. I love, I love you. you. I need to tell you something about. Uh, I, uh, please don't take it personally. Please don't take it personally. Yeah. This has come from a place of love, but I got to tell you, um, your perfume smell like ass. You asphyxiate in me. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't no auto erotic asphyxiation. This is straight up asphyxiation. Yeah, lo- I love you, girl. But your um, but your perfume is uh, rancid. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. I, you know, people are so sensitive. I know, but that's why you have to preface it by saying, and I wouldn't get offended if my girlfriend, if you said to me, girl, I, you know I love you, but that perfume, I don't understand what you love I about do, it. I do. I know you wear that that stuff from, in, oh you know, my God, from England. That. You like that, though. I do. I love it. Yeah. I really, what's it called? Freak Scarab, but it's the Scarab one. People don't, they have Freak perfume, and everybody yeah. knows about that. Yeah. Freak Scarab is their second scent. It's by Ila Masqua. I see that's, I can't say that name. What no. is it? Ila Masqua? I was saying it wrong for years. What is it called? Ila Masqua. Ila yeah. Masqua. Freak Scarab, and I'll get you some, is... No, I still have the bottle you gave me. I love it. Yes. Love it. Yes. That's Freak. That's the regular one. Oh. Scarab is the one I wear all the time. I'm going to get you Scarab. Oh. I'll get you Scarab, too. You'll like them both. And they're not too strong. That's what I like about them. I am a perfume whore. Mm-hmm. I love perfumes. But I do cycle them, through them because I do get bored yeah, with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, th- that makes sense. You know, I used to wear them when I was a teenager and into my 20s. Did you then- wear your mother's? I, she wore some Cody madness. See, everybody remembers. You remember Love's Baby Soft when we were a kid? I, no, she didn't wear She did wear Gina And Gina Tay. Tay. Yes, yeah. yes. Um, um, but, um, there was a lemon one too. Do you remember yes, that? By yeah. Them? No, that was... My mother used to wear two. She used to wear Paloma Picasso, uh-huh. which I still like. It's kind of they spicy. still make it? And Oh. De joy. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Which that was, was her fancy purse. My mother wore that one. She that was her fancy that. one, that was right? Her fancy one. Yeah. Yes, yeah. But uh, and my mother wore Chanel number no. five too. She loved that. Yeah, too. my mother had yeah. that too. Didn't wear it. But um, uh, and then somewhere in my thirties, I think, is What'd you when wear? I couldn't, I couldn't stand the smell of perfumes, and it would, I would get a, a runny nose from them. Sometimes and I a, do. And a headache. Yeah. Sometimes you know? I do. And then um, uh, probably uh, two or three years ago, I I found myself. Loving them again. You broke through. I guess so. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, like getting allergies and stuff in your older life and then you grow out of them. I yeah. think it's kind of the same thing. Yeah. But Glamazon is amazing. You can get it at it. colorevolution.com. It really is reminiscent of uninhibited to me. So if you know that kind of spicy smell, that was my all-time favorite perfume mm. to this day. You just can't get it anymore because yeah. it'd be rancid. Yeah. Um, get yourself some uh, RuPaul's Glamazon. And, you know, it's not just a plug for my friend. It's really a beautiful perfume. I love it. I wear it every day. I yeah. love it. So go on and get yourself some. Well, there you have it. Um, that was I, fun. That was fun. I hope we helped some people with uh, the depression storyline. Or, or we didn't either talk that about, or there's people jumping off bridges right we now. We talked a little bit about personal breakthroughs, but maybe on the next show we'll expand on that. You yeah, because I think it's important, and we see the queens go through it on the yes. show. Yes. And I really enjoy when that happens. We see Jinx go through it and mm-hmm. Coco Montrese and Trinity K. Bonet and so many queens have their breakthrough moments. And, what we and break down do, moments. That's, well, that's yeah. good TV. Yeah. All right. So um, let's talk about that on the next show. Sounds great. All right. Love ya. Bye. Bye. Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? If you can't love yourself. How in the hell you gonna love somebody else? Can I get an amen? And don't forget to subscribe on iTunes. If you can't love yourself, how in the hell you gonna love somebody else? Hey.